gone well. Who has time for all this gossip? Sister wives. Who from the Sister Wives family is very nervous about season 19 and how they are going to handle Garrison Brown's passing? We'll discuss that. Also, the new promotional graphic artwork for Sister Wives season 19. Did you notice? Did you notice the subtle innuendos that fans are talking about in the graphics? We'll get into that. And are we being scammed by, we know Angela Deem and Michael. Did Michael just do a GoFundMe, raise $40,000, supposedly for an immigration lawyer, but did he buy a car? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's so much. I might have to go to two days a week of TLC talk and dirt because we get a recap. Welcome to Platteville Season 6, Episode 6. Welcome in. I'm Sarah Frazier. You're listening to The Sarah Frazier Show, and I'm so glad that you're here. Wednesdays is TLC talk. It means all things TLC gossip. I love the goss. I love like staying up on pop culture. I have forever since my radio days. And it was Sarah's dirty, dirty at 630. Anyhow, so it continues. Let's get into Sister Wives because I know that's what you all love so much. And then we'll talk about could Michael be scamming us all from Michael and Angela Deem and a welcome to Platteville recap plus a few little other things. So Sister Wives, did you notice with the new graphics? Now, these graphics have been out for the past week. I'm going to show it to you because, as you guys may know, I put my episodes up on YouTube. Not the same day at a later date, but anyhow, here's the graphic I'm holding up. Now, the new graphics for season 19 show Cody, Robin, all the way over to the far right, and then Mary, Janelle, and Christine. And you guys are so smart. Fans have noticed the subtle innuendos of this. And I have to say, if these are true, like TLC, hmm, y'all are real good at what you do. So people are looking at this graphic and they are saying this is good versus evil. Because Mary, Janelle, and Christine are in light colors. They're like light, bright, like what you would think of as an angel, what you would think of as good. And Cody and Robin are in black and dark navy blue, the villains. <laughs> I didn't even, what? I didn't notice that. They also say that Robin is no longer paired with the women. So they also say this is a this TLC showing us survivors versus the villains. Never even thought of that. And then they also believe that Mary is strategically wearing a blazer to show she's gone from Meg to girl boss. Because I'm telling you, Mary, after she came on my podcast with Jen and they talked about the real estate that they own, that they, when they talked about Lizzie's heritage bed and breakfast, the worthy up. And by the way, we're also going to talk about is Mary still in LuLaRoe, which I'm kicking myself. I wish I'd asked her, but fans also figured that out too. So people have a lot to say about this new graphic art. Now, the other thing that people have said is it's super AI modified. It's super airbrushed. I mean, it is. It definitely is like, there's a lot of filter for sure, but because they all look great. And I mean, Robin's eyes are enhanced blue. Cody's skin looks great. Now, Mary says he has not had any plastic surgery, but it sure looks like he's had the Botox. <laughs> so there you have it. If you looked at that graphic, and I almost feel like it's one of those mystery things. Do you ever read Daily Mail? Ugh the daily fail. Do you ever bring up daily fail? And sometimes they have like, can you spot the image within 10 seconds? If you do, you're in the one percentile of genius people. Okay. Now, most of the time I can't spot it. However, like you look long enough and it's like a cheetah in the grass, you know? So if you spotted those, congrats. You're like spotting a cheetah in the grass in like two seconds. If you got that from that, that graphic, cause I didn't get that. The other thing that people are noticing from the season 19 trailer that everyone is up in arms about is in the season 19 trailer, there is a scene where Cody is riding a horse and he has his arm around who appears to be Robin. 
Now, people have some real debates online. People believe this isn't Robin. They think this is Robin's lookalike daughter, Aurora. Excuse me. Mm -mm. Like, what in the world are you all on about? Cody wants Rob Dog. Now, has he been weird with the kids, kind of like Louis Ruelas and Teresa's daughters? A little. But that is so Robin. And like, don't even go there, okay? Don't even go there. It is so Rob Dog in that trailer. But anyhow, people are making a stink about that up, up uh, online. I also had mentioned to you, is Mary still selling LuLaRoe? She is. Now, Mary's Worthy Up Symposium is coming up. And a lot of people, you can join, by the way. Just go to Mary's website, which is, by the way, linked on her Instagram. So it's got people talking because Mary's a girl. She's a girl boss. People are saying, oh, well, is the LuLaRoe leggings still around? And apparently they are. You can still purchase them. But right now, Mary is all about her business portfolio. Yeah. And when you go to her business portfolio, LuLaRoe is still mentioned. And so is Liv and Cameo. She also owns Park Lane Jewelry, Worthy Up, and Lizzie's. This girl is, she really has, she really is girl boss. So Mary's a little multi-million. Yeah. Multi, I think Mary is, I would love to know, she's doing real well. Uh, so LuLaRoe is still in existence. People have been talking about that with this Worthy Up um, that continues to get a lot of momentum and traction. And then the family member that is extremely nervous about season 19 and the handling of Garrison Brown is our girl, McKelty. McKelty and Tony have an uber popular Patreon that you can become a member of weekly. They do their recaps. Well, in the most recent one, McKelty expressed that she is super nervous in the way that TLC is going to handle the Garrison stuff. Now, she goes back and forth on the Patreon and she's like, look, I I'm going to be honest. I don't think there's anything they could do that I would be comfortable with. I don't think there's any scenario, any way that they play it. I think I'm going to be upset. But she does say that the ideas she has heard, and I'm assuming those are maybe from her mom, she doesn't like. And she says, all I truly hope, the ideas that I've heard so far, I am not wild about. I can't see it playing out well. I truly hope that TLC just makes it about him to really honor him. She confirmed that season 19 was in fact filmed two years ago. And even McKelty has questions about how they're going to handle his passing because it was not in the trailer. So McKelty says, I'm as confused as anybody else. It's kind of what she alluded to. And she said that season 19 was filmed two years ago. So either they're going to bring his death in at the very end of season 19, or they're going to try and somehow work it in the timeline and try to make it match from two years ago and modern day, going almost like back and forth, which she said, I just don't understand how that would work well. I got to say, I kind of agree. Uh, that I have to agree. That is going to be, I personally think that they're going to address it. I almost could see them addressing it. Okay, I, I don't know. I feel like a little bit, it could be, you know how Bravo, I think they're going to do it Bravo style. Bravo will often do this where they will show something that happened in current time. Tom Girardi getting arrested. And then they'll play out the season, which we know was filmed like five months earlier. And they'll say like months earlier or something, which I could see them trying to probably fudge, even though we know that, Season 19 was filmed two years ago. I could see them leading with that. And then it does like almost foreshadowing it. And then it plays out at the end. Or maybe they do. I could, God, what is my gut? What's my gut? My gut is they're going to start out the season and they're not going to address it until the end. And she says she, she feels like that's a mistake. The other thing that people are talking about is Redditors are debating as the new season approaches. How is it? And people really want to know Cody and Robin. How do Cody and Robin seem to feel about the fact that David Woolley, Christine Brown's husband, continues to get a lot of love and support online? And it seems like with their kids, but Robin doesn't. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I can tell you the reason why. And that is because P 
people in the, it's just totally different. Like there's so many reasons. That's such a, it's such a weird debate that people are having. Like Christine left Cody. So, you know, people wanted her to move on after years of trying. So of course they're going to be more excited about a David. Plus it's still new. She and David have only been married. I don't even, not even a year. It's coming up on a year this fall, like October, November-ish. But he's only been in their lives like a year and a half. Give it a hot second. Everybody who's got a step parent knows. Give it five years. You feel, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have, I had a wonderful stepfather who I got, got along with very well. We, you know, of course we had our moments, but then they, my mom and stepfather got divorced. And then anyway, now they hang out all the time. It's a whole thing. But needless to say, it's hard. They're not your parent. However, I think it was totally different. The kids were younger. Robin ended up having kids with Cody. And from the beginning, Robin, Cody was like madly in love with Robin. It's like completely different. All right, I got to do some rapid fire gossip so we can get into Welcome to Plathville season six, episode six. Although, do we need to? Ugh. I'm loving this season. I think season six is the best. But fans online, I'm talking from every blog, Everything posted are like, this is the worst season ever. It's boring. I'll tell you, it, it, people are actually liking Kim and Barry. Isn't this crazy? I'll tell you which kid they hate now the most. But shout out to Chantel from the family Chantel. That show, of course, is done on TLC because Chantel and Pedro are over. But a lot of people think that Chantel has a new man. This week, she posted two dozen roses on her IG, alluding to the fact that she is dating someone. <clears throat> Is it Waka Flocka? Okay. Woo! Is it the Waka Flocka? I don't know, but he was awfully into her and she loves her some Waka, Waka Flocka flame. But she does not allude to who it was. And then remember when she was on Single Life, she dated the Grecian soccer player for a hot second. That didn't work out. They're over. But Chantel, if you've got a new man, tell us who it is because all the rappers slide in her DMs. They all love her. Colin Goslin, John and Kate plus eight. Kate Goslin, John Goslin's son. Got a ton of press this past week. Went online, said he'd been discharged from the Marines, blamed his mom. Also uh, dropped a nugget that he's going to be back on TV. Excuse me? Excuse well, well, what show are we working on? Okay, okay, Colin. So, I mean, he's literally asked by news outlets, if he's coming back to television. And he said, yeah, probably not full time. Okay, so what, sh like, could John and Kate plus eight be coming back? I'm so confused. Am I, like, was I reading this wrong? Right, wrong, in between? This was a Fox News article that was picked up. Before I get to if they're coming back to TV and speculating what it could be, he, his whole life, he says that he's wanted to be a Marine. Clearly very smart kid, because now he's going to Penn State. And he said, I have very few other wishes in my life that would top being a United States Marine. But once they found out that he was put into a mental institution when he was in high school, he was discharged right after training. Colin plans to attend Penn State to major in finance, where he'll be able to stay close to his dad and his sister. He wants nothing to do with his mom, but he says he does hope that someday he can find a path back to being close to his siblings again. In terms of the possibility that Colin could return to reality TV again, he said, yeah, there's a good possibility. Alibet likely not full-time. What? So is John Goslin, is TLC planning to relaunch? Now, Kate, by the way, why did she institutionalize him? Kate was quoted as saying he went into a Fairmont behavioral health system when he was just 12 years old. Eef. A psychiatric hospital located in Philly. I was not able with my own resources here to meet his needs, Kate said during an episode of Kate Plus Eight. Meanwhile, Kate Plus Eight continued to air with seven other children. John claimed he didn't know that Colin had been sent to a behavioral institute until he was eating lunch with his kids one day and Colin was absent. At the time, Kate had full custody of the children and insisted she didn't have to tell John where Colin was because of a, co a court order. Oh, it's so messy. That's just one of the messiest TV divorces in history, I feel like. Oh, so much damage done to those kids. And I mean, where is Kate? Are we ever going to hear from her again? I hear she is allegedly, allegedly, she has not been back on TV 
because she is very difficult, allegedly. Mm. So could Michael from Angela Deem and Michael happily ever after? We just saw him vindicated. Uh, Angela Deem wants an annulment. She wants their marriage completely scraped from the books. Well, he threw up a little over a week ago. He threw up a GoFundMe, wanted an immigration attorney so he doesn't get sent back to Nigeria. Initially, he started the GoFundMe. He would put it up for $50,000, but then decreased it by half to make it more achievable. And since, uh, and as of just a day or two ago, $40,000. The dude should have kept it at 50. Aim high, my friend. Aim high. Yeah. It reached its target within two days for his GoFundMe. Is that not wild? Here's the problem, though. Are we being scammed? Are we being scammed? He was at a tire dealership. Now, I feel like this is, you know, you can read a lot into this. You can read a lot into this. But he was at a t- $41,323 from when this, when I'm uh, confirm when we're recording this. This is crazy. Crazy. <laughs> the fans came through for this man. So he was at a tire dealership and should and and you know wrote shout out. I just bought my tires here. Love these guys. The crew was taking pictures with him. And a lot of people are like, um, why do you need tires? Have you just bought a new vehicle with the money that we gave you for this GoFundMe? <laughs> Wouldn't it be gnarly if he just scammed everybody and he's like, fuck all y'all. I just bought a brand new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to that immigration attorney, but first. (laughs) Love, 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 love. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I don't know. It's hard to say, but people are speculating that he's at this car dealership buying four new tires or at a, sorry, it was like at a Goodyear tire. He said, like, why are you at this Goodyear tire shop? And, you know, I mean, I mean, guys, he could also just need tires for an existing vehicle, but people have run with this. Let's talk about Welcome to Plathville season six, episode six that aired last night. I'm a huge fan. People are not. I don't know. Is this the end of this show? Kind of feels like it could be. It's it's starting to be a little, feeling a little season finale. E-e-e. It's the finale feeling that way. Why do I say that? Well, because it feels a little season finale E in the way that there's some resolution, right? There's some closure. If we see Barry Plath at the end of this go out on a date, Kim's boot up with Ken, maybe her DUI is resolved. Where's that, by the way? Are we going to see Kim D? Kim D. Kim Plath. Too many years of listening to David Yontif and Kim D. Anyhow, are we going to see Kim Plath's DUI? That was huge. We are. Like, I, I got to hand it to TLC I, because we're already episode six. I believe last season we only had eight, nine episodes. We're more than halfway through now. So are we going to see that? Or are they going to just ignore it and wrap up? Is this the end? I don't know. Uh, First of all, what I do know is that fans online have had it with Mariah Plath. Y'all, people are coming for her music. As in they don't like it. (laughs) They can't stand how slowly she speaks and that her voice is so soft. People are literally commenting online, when when is this girl going to speak up? And enough heartbreak. She's always in heartbreak mode. Now for three seasons, it's been nothing but heartbreak, writing about heartbreak, getting over heartbreak. Like, doesn't this girl have anything else going on? I will say she seems a little off. Like, she doesn't seem her happy-go-lucky self. Now, last night's episode, they all were doing exercises. (sighs) Why? And I get the theme. TLC like, loves the theme. They were all doing exercises. Olivia's here in Los Angeles doing Pilates. Ethan is with some guy, uh, Andreas, that looks like Justin Timberlake, lifting weights in Minnesota. And then 
Mariah, Micah, Barry all go to a Spartan run. So I get it. We're, we're sim- symbolizing like overcoming obstacles, achieving something, sticking with something through the end to see results. And uh, is anybody else jarred by this show too? <laughs> like the, the DLC. <laughs> I freaking love this network. We open episode six and it's just like, oh, by the way, uh, Mariah and Ethan, like they're so casual. They're just like, yeah, we finalized our divorce. Olivia's like, hey, I'm back in LA. I finalized my divorce. Like, uh, okay, because I believe last week he wouldn't sign the papers. He needed more time. Like, that's a big jump. Anything happen in between? <laughs> what? <laughs> There's no explanations. Just like, oh, he signed the papers. I'm single. Feels great. All right. So uh, Olivia is all about taking her power back. Hence this powerful Pilates class. We're introduced to her new girlfriend out here who she met on an airplane. Now, shout out to Olivia. I met Schman sitting next to him on an airplane. I'm telling you, you want to meet people, get to an airport, get your ass to an airport and get on a flight. Meet so many people. Something about the air in the airport and the airplane. Barry Plath, we see throughout this episode, no glasses. Did we get LASIK? Are we experimenting with no glasses? Are we trying to look hotter? Like there's no explanation for these things. (laughs) Huh? Hey, my kids told me I'm hideous with these glasses on. I'm going to try doing the episode without. I don't know. He just all of a sudden doesn't have any. Ethan's like working out, hanging out with Andreas, his friend, and accepting the fact that he's now divorced. Uh, You know, like I said, they're working out the entire time. Like, you know, I have no idea why that had to be the theme for all of them. It's just sort of... I truly thought at the end we were going to get an update on everybody's BMI. It was just like they were all lifting weights the entire one. But the big, so so they do the Spartan race with Mariah and Ethan and Isaac and, and all that. And so, oh, sorry, Ethan wasn't there, Micah and Barry, and they're all hanging out as a family. And then the big thing at the at the end of this episode, the huge reveal is Micah Plath's girlfriend comes on camera for the very first time, Veronica. We are introduced to Veronica. Gorgeous. Stunning. Now, she does look a little older than he does. I don't know. Did anyone feel that? But maybe it's just me. I don't know. And sometimes it can just be Florida. You know what I'm saying? The Florida women, they mature a lot quicker down there. And I don't think it's the sun. It's just, it's something about Florida women. (laughs) They're a different breed. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you're from Florida. It is. And it's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like Maine women don't like age gracefully either. I'm just saying like Florida women, like they know how to throw down, throw back and throw up. And so there's a lot going on in the system. Needless to say, let's get back to Veronica. So they reveal Veronica for the first time. I'm not like saying this as a negative. Sorry, this went really off path. I was like, I was, see, I don't know how y'all are not into this. I was hooked at what she had to say and the chemistry and how they looked at each other. Micah Plath is like becoming a man in front of our eyes. The dude's like masculine towards her. I love the entire thing. I'll tell you right now, he's doing a great job killing all those gay rumors that he would like Andy Plath wants that Andy Cohen wants to Andy Plath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta not record anything else today. <laughs> I'm saying all kinds of shit. Andy Plath, Andy Cohen. <laughs> Andy Cohen has invited Micah Plath twice to be a bartender. I'd watch what happens live. Hard to get invited back. And Micah Plath last year posed for a gay coffee table book. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying it doesn't, like, it leads people to speculate. Well, the the chemistry those two had last night on camera, I'm not speculating. I think the guy likes checks. So she explains why she's super private. She just says she's a more quiet person. She doesn't want to be in the spotlight. Even when they first met and they would take pictures together on the beach, she would cover half her face. Okay. Now look, girl, I I was with you about being private. I get it. My schmano is private. But private pictures, you're concealing half your face. Like, okay, let's be honest here. 
you are the, you're not Princess Diana reincarnate. Like this is not we don't have to hide. You know, we haven't just spotted Tupac. Like nobody ain't nobody that pressed. You know what I mean? You ain't JLo in the wild, all right? But she talks about that she would even cover her face. And uh, she also says that she really in, is enjoying the Plath family. She, We're kind of learning about her personality. Sounds like she's, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if she seems a little boring for him. It's revealed she's never she never tried salsa or ranch dressing until meeting Micah Plath. Huh? Huh? True. Who does think ranch dressing? Doesn't everybody love ranch dressing? Now, I can understand a Hidden Valley, not my favorite. But when you go gourmet ranch, you never go back. It's so good on everything. And then oddly enough, they kind of look alike. Did anyone notice that they really do? Somehow the Plath family, they truly are attracted to other extremely blonde people. And they managed to continue to find these very gorgeous, like Norwegian looking Viking type folks everywhere, all across the country. They looked a lot alike. She's apparently a realtor in Florida, and I hear she's a very successful realtor. So I do think that's part of the reason that she wants to be private. No word on marriage. When the producers go, so what are we thinking? Are we getting married here, kids? They both don't really answer, which is good. Micah Plass, like 22. She's probably 22, 24. Like, pump the brakes. We saw what happened with Kim and Barry. We're, we're seeing what's going down with Ethan and Olivia. Let's just pump it, okay? If it's meant to be, whether it's 22 or 26, we'll get there. But now she's on TV. So have we created a monster? Have we created a monster or is this going to help their relationship? What is going to happen? But I loved the reveal. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was fascinating. I I am here for the show, but it seems as though fans believe this show has jumped the shark. They're not down for this 180 that Kim and Barry have made. They wanted Kim and Barry to stay old school and true to their beliefs. But I'll tell you what, when I had Olivia Plath, I've had Olivia Plath a couple of times on this podcast, and she always alluded to the fact that Kim, like Kim wanted to be famous. Like Kim's getting her dream. And I, I don't fault anybody for that, but just own it. Just be who you are. Cause when you try to pretend like we're going to be this uber religious, although that pretending that did get her on TV. <laughs> oh um, Yeah. And I think I kind of made this clear, but Mariah Plath is who people... Now, Mariah Plath is getting more hate than Kim and Barry. Excuse me? There it is. All right. What are you guys... There is just so much going on in the 90-day world. I love, love, love all the tea that is happening. I'm so excited for the countdown to Sister Wives. I have another Sister Wives-related guest coming up for you, which I can't wait. But you can follow me on TikTok for more updates at The Sarah Fraser Show. And uh, love you guys. Bye, everybody.